Hello, today I'll show you how to digitize embroidery designs using Embird Studio. This is a program you can download from the Embird website and you can experiment with the free trial, but the licensed version where you can actually save what you create and use all the functions does have a registration cost. Um, it's relatively inexpensive compared to other programs out there. Uh, you need both the studio and the editor for what I'm about to show you. Um, so I'm creating designs for my Princess Anna costume from Frozen and uh, I created them on a Brother SE400 machine. First of all, create a new file and set it to the hoop size you're going to use. So for me, that is a 10 by 10. Second, I'm gonna pull up an image that I'm going to build over. So it's, in, it's like it's in the background. Um, it could be a screen, crap, a screen cap, it can be a redrawn image, um, just something of the design you wanna create. So now that I have that image behind it, I can start creating vectors over it. Uh, I choose the points where I want the nodes to go and drag the last node over the first node to finish the object. So here I'm doing a very, very linear part of the stem. So you want to join up that first and last node and that will help you complete the shape. You can always go back and clean it up. That's the nice thing. If it's not exactly straight how you want and then finish up that shape. There, now my shape is all together and I'm going to fill it with stitches. Well, first I'm gonna go back and clean up one more thing and then I'm going to fill it with stitches. <laughs> So when you choose your stitches, um, you go to parameters and you can change between several different fill stitches. The satin stitch is the prettiest one, especially for something like this design that has a lot of vines and leaves. Um, it's called auto column. So when you select auto column, it'll automatically fill in that shape with really pretty satin stitches. Make sure you save often because it really stinks to work on this for a long time and then lose what you've made. So now I'm going to do a shape that has more curves and show you what that looks like. So at first it's going to look really blocky when you create it with the nodes, but then you go back and pull all those curved nodes in and out to make a smoother curve. So I'm going to follow the basic curve of this uh, leaf here. Make sure you put several nodes around the curve at the end and really anywhere your curve changes. Okay, so it looks a bit blocky, right? So now I'm going to go back and pull some of these out or in and give it a nice round appearance. If there's parts that still look a bit too blocky, you can add in more nodes. If you find that you just have too many nodes, you can also take them out uh, by right clicking. You can add or remove notes, nodes. And it's looking pretty good.
Okay, now I finished the shape, and then again, I'm going to fill it with stitches. Oh, now I'm going to tweak a couple things. Sometimes after you finalize the shape, you can really see where it needs a little more tweaking. Just trying to get that first node and the last node to overlap so I can finish my shape. Okay, so now I have my finished shape, my leaf. So I want to go to parameters and fill it with stitches. Again, I'm just going to go with that auto column. It looks really nice for uh, long, slender pieces like this. You can experiment with some of the other fill stitches too. But for this one, satin stitch is really what it looks like um, and what looks best. Okay, so obviously for a design like this, there's a lot of symmetry. I don't want to redraw all the shapes again. Number one, it's tedious. Number two, um, it probably won't be end up exactly the same. So what I do is actually um, copy the shape and duplicate it by right clicking and then drag it over and reverse it. So my shape is intact. You can notice this is that exact same shape. Um, the, the vector image is the same, but it doesn't have any fill stitches. It's not going to have any stitches when you copy it. So you'll need to uh, right click it again and fill it with stitches. But it's nice because I didn't have to redraw it. Woohoo! So if you notice now I'm picking colors, kind of designating the colors that my um, different stitches are going to be. This is going to be important later. Right now it doesn't matter exactly what green or aqua color I pick. Um, just make sure all those pieces that are going to be the same thread color are the same color. So now I'm switching to my pink section. I just, um, I skipped this, but I made the this other shape in pink, the flower petals. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to make a pre-existing shape that Embert has. So here I wanted to make a circle. So you wanna start by clicking your first node and then you go up into the menu and create your shape. So when you're satisfied with the shape and size, you right click to finish the shape. Um, you can move it around and resize it from there. I have a hard time getting the circles on the right spot to begin with, um, so you can always move it around. And then finally, you're going to fill it with stitches just like we did the other ones. There, and then I'm going to move it to the right spot. So it didn't, obviously, it didn't end up. Okay, I'm going to make one more circle here. Again, you want to make your starting node. Then you click shape up at the top menu and select whichever shape you want, in this case a circle. Gonna finish my shape here and fill it in with some stitches and move it exactly where I want it. Again, this is a different color, so I want to go into, notice my menu on the right, I've got everything color coded. I have to change this little circle to be a different color. It's going to have a different thread color when I actually embroider it. So I drag a blue color over on top of it. And that's my flower design for my skirt so far.
So the next thing I'm going to do is a little more, a little more advanced, uh, but I'm going to create connection points between the pieces that are the same color. So if you notice like the stem and the two leaves are the same color, so the thread's going to be connected between those pieces. And instead of having it connect in a weird spot where I'm going to have to cut it off, it's better to create a connection between them so you can tie that off when you're finished embroidering. So I'm kind of changing where the start and end points are, like where that thread's going to stop and go to the next shape to a more logical placement. So it's not just coming off the middle of my, the middle of my piece. And a really cool feature here is you can actually preview how it's going to stitch. So you can see like what order and which direction the stitches are going to go and see if that's what you want. And if not, you can go back again, you can always go back and change it. Change the order up. And you just change the order by moving them around in the right panel, the right panel on the right. And then you can right click any shape to create a connection with the shape before it. And here I'm stretching that point way out of the way because I want to be able to trim it and tie it off. Now you might not always want to do that. You might want to just create a couple little running stitches between them if they're very close, but this is a big enough space. I'm actually going to have it run off my design. And that's nice because it's better to have a long piece you can tie off securely rather than just snipping a little thread and then having sort of a loose thread on your embroidery. Another thing I like to do is do use, use the 3D preview so I can kind of see what the stitches are looking like. It doesn't give you, it doesn't show you exactly, but it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. Like what direction the stitches are going um, and how it'll look. Creating another connection point. And in this case, I'm taking out the nodes until I get a totally straight line because it's just going to be one big long stitch. And that is, that's what I have so far. That's the end of part one. I'll look forward for my video of part two. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.